So we're ready to get started here with the inductions now for the Pioneers and Legends. We induct into two categories, the Pioneers being those folks that didn't directly race, but everything else that encompasses the sport, and the Legends being the race car drivers. Every inductee gets a chance to give a speech, and they also have one or more individuals that give them their introduction and share some stories as well. So if this is your first time here, that's a little bit about how the program will work. We'll go back and forth between the pioneers and the legends all the way through the 10 inductees that you see on the stage with us here tonight. Our next inductee comes to us from the legend category, and it is Glenn Mooneyham, and we'll welcome back to the stage Ken Esri. Glenn's time to be in the spotlight. Daryl and Randy have had their uh, nights, and you know, probably if um, people could see the future, it probably should have been the whole Mooneyham family at one time because uh, Clyde and Faye, their mother and dad, had sat in the stands, and, and you know, they had four boys Terry, uh, Daryl, Randy, and Glenn, and uh, they probably spent more time in the, in the grandstand, spent more money there than 90% than of the people in the country. Uh, great, great people. I mean, Clyde, uh, I've never heard him say anything bad about any driver out there, no matter what happened. And, uh, you know, it, it just, Glenn's racing career started in 1970. I think Daryl had asked uh, Glenn to uh, help him build a car, and they took it to Monette and uh, had so much fun that the next week, Glenn had to have a car. So uh, they built another car. And that's kind of how the problem started because Glenn didn't have any way of getting his car there. He'd, he'd pull it with the train from Daryl's house at about what, 10, 12 miles to Monette. If he, if he had somebody to pull him, he'd pull it with a chain. If not, Daryl uh, worked at Anderson Motor Company, and, and he would use Anderson's wrecker and tow his and push Glenn's. <laughs> that's the way they'd get to the races at Monette. And Daryl might be Glenn on the, on the racetrack, but Glenn said he could always fit in, finish in front of Daryl coming home. So. <laughs> One of the, probably the best year that Glenn had was in 1984. He was running the sportsman class, and this was a tough class back then. At uh, Monad and, and uh, Bolivar, he won 24 features, as well as a, the FINA Missouri, Missouri Dirt Track Championship and the Four State. Um, one, Oh, a long-time friend, Larry Caldwell, had a station in Republic, and they came to my shop about, I think it's probably around three or four o'clock, and uh, they was hunting some used bearings to uh, build a motor. Then they decided they wanted to race that night, and uh, they took four, three or four motors, tried to build a motor, and then uh, the pistons and rods didn't match the, uh, the bearings were used, the, uh, probably the head gaskets were used. And now this is three or four o'clock and they're gonna race ball over that night. And uh, they uh, go back to Larry Station, they take all these parts, they put it together with an impact wrench, they don't take torque anything, they don't check clearances, and they get the ball over in time for the feature. And he wins it, so. <laughs> but he, maybe he, he, he said he slowed down so much because he, he was thinking about man Monette's tomorrow night and he said I sure want to run it too and, and he's kind of in doubt about this motor anyway so he uh, but that's the, that's the kind of stuff that Glenn ran and this guy could get more out of the car than 90% of the drivers on the racetrack. Darryl drove one of, uh, Glenn drove one of Darryl's cars for about two years. 
then he started driving for Jay Henson. And that lasted approximately five years. And, and uh, one thing about Glenn, his family came first. If there's ball games or anything going on, Glenn would be there before he would go to races. And he drove for Jay about five years. Jay uh, bought a car from Larry Phillips, and, and Larry told him, he said, Jay, he said, this, this car's not any good. And uh, that's, but he tell, he bought it. So uh, I guess he didn't tell Glenn about it because the, they put the motor in the car and went to Lebanon. And Glenn passes Larry on the outside and finishes in front of him in that car the first night. And Larry's over there wanting to know what they done to it. I don't, Glenn said it didn't do anything except put the motor in it. They didn't have time to do anything else. So, but, uh, you know, Glenn, like I said, Glenn could get the most of any car uh, that anyone could on the racetrack. In fact, Glenn will, he'll take advantage of you on, on the racetrack too. I mean, if you make a mistake, because I was leading the race at Bonnet one night, and I'm colorblind. They threw the yellow flag, or they threw the white flag. I thought it was the yellow flag. I was leading the race. Going down the back stretch, I slowed down because he raced to the yellow flag. Glenn flies by me. I think Johnny Bone passes me then. Glenn goes, and I look up, and the green light is still on in the corner. And uh, Glenn took advantage of me and won the race. He could at least, <laughs> could at least pull up the door on, but he didn't. <laughs> You know, not only is Glenn a great racer, you know, I've raced for 42 years and been raced pretty much all over the country. And this guy is probably one of the best flagmen that I've ever raced. In. And I, I mean, had the opportunity to, to race uh, with or have him as a flagman. I mean, this, this like Randy was talking before, uh, they have radio, before they have, uh, everything to uh, be in contact with the track help and the flagman. Glenn could sit up there or stand on, stand on that flag stand. He could count the laps, know, score the race, keep the lap cars in their place. And 99% uh, of the time he would race right when the race was over. He, uh, you know, he, he was unbelievable up there how he could uh, how he could uh, do that and uh, know when to throw the white flag because 90% of the time when they flipped the white or the light on for the flag the bulb was burned out or it didn't work or whatever. But Glenn still knew when to throw the flag. Well, Glenn is well deserved of this uh, honor, and uh, you know he also needs to be rewarded uh, as a great family man. His wife of 50 years, Lynn, has taken care of the kids, supported him in his racing, and uh, you know this day and time, a marriage that's lasted 50 years, he's got to be doing something right. So, Lynn, you did. You're, you're a great, great dad, a great granddad. He, Glenn brings me some, uh, comes out and talks once in a while and, and uh, talks about his grandkids playing ball, playing, uh, got a granddaughter that pole vaults is just absolutely great. And he, him and Lynn will go all over the country to watch his grandkids. And, uh, you know, I, if anyone deserves to be inducted, it's definitely Glenn Mooneyham. Glenn, good job, buddy. <laughs> kids know I don't like to get in front of people, but uh, I'll do my best. First, I'd like to congratulate uh, all the inductees tonight uh, into the Racers Hall of Fame. Uh, some of them I've known for quite a while, and they're all good people. 
I'd like to thank my wife for supporting me and my kids, uh, doing what I like to do. Uh, I'd like to thank Kenny for the introduction. Uh, me and Kenny go way back. We've had a lot of fun times racing together. Uh, on and off the track, uh, we, we've had a lot of good times. The only thing I've got to say, if you ever went to Kenny's shop when they worked out of the, out of the uh, chicken house, was uh, don't walk in the door with your hands out because if they had a torch in their hand, if there's a nut or a bolt or something on the floor, they'd heat it up. And about the time you get in, they'd throw it at you and holler, catch. <laughs> and what do you do? You catch it. Don't take you long to find out. And I'd also like to thank Kenny for that one night at Monet. He was leading the feature. I was running second. Doing all I could do to stay in second. And Johnny Bone was behind me and the white flag comes out. And Kenny, he slows down when we go by the flag stand. And I thought, what's he doing? Has he had trouble? And when we go around number two, I looked across, looked behind me, and Johnny Bone went by him, and then Kenny picked it up. But uh, I won the race, and Kenny got third. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Kenny. <laughs> uh, and then I'd like to thank my oldest brother, Darrell. Uh, he called me one night when we first started, or when, when he was going to get started. He said they started a new class at the moment called the Hobby Stock class. He said, help me weld the road bars in. So we welded them in his car and uh, went to Monette that Sunday night and raced. And uh, it looked fun, so I found a car. I gave $65 for it. Knocked the windows out, welded the road bars in it. But then I didn't have no way to get to the racetrack Sunday night, so. Uh, that first night, why, uh, I had a cousin, Ray Dean, in uh, Mooneyham, and uh, I said, Dean, you're elected. And he said, what? And I said, jump in. We're going to the races. And he said, uh, what, am I, what, what are we doing? And I said, you're driving that right there. I'm pulling you. So we, we go to the races and we come back. And uh, a couple weeks later, why, I didn't have nobody to go with me. And I'm down there at, at Barona, where Darrell lived, and, uh, he says, how are you going to get your car there? And I said, I guess I won't go. He said, no, you get in that car and you take it out down the road. And he said, when I bump you twice, you take it out of gear, shut the key off. And he said, you drive. And so I did. And so when the race was over, we headed home. He said, now whatever you do, you make sure you hang over halfway on the right so I can see you going down the road. And that, we did that several times in one of the races because like I said, I didn't have I didn't have a name to race, let alone something to pull a car with. But, but I went racing anyway. And then uh, and then Darrell he uh, he decided he wanted to promote, and he uh, promoted Monette and uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. And uh, he got me to flag for him. He said, "You're going to flag," and so I said, "All right." So I flagged for a couple of years there, and then I went back to racing. And this time I went back with, uh, I drove a car for Daryl for a couple of years. And then I got, uh, went back and got my own car. And uh, a good friend of mine, Larry Caldwell, he come in partnerships with me and we partnered up. And uh, he was a good wrench man. And hey, we build engines cheaper than anybody else. We'd slam them together, go out there and take a two boat main where everybody else was running four boats, balanced engines. We was, uh, we was running uh, mismatched rods, pistons. It didn't matter anything whether we'd get the car to run, we would go run. And uh, Larry, Larry was a great man to help me and uh, he's one reason why I had a lot of success and he was a, a good mechanic and wrench man for me. And then we run for several years and we both run out of money and so I started, uh, uh, Jay Henson asked me if I'd drive for him. And uh, I started driving for Jay. And we had a car, and uh, he had a car, and the first one I had, uh, I wrecked it at the moment, totaled it out. 
and he went over to Larry Phillips's and got a car, and Larry says, this how chassis will not work on dirt. You cannot make it work. So Jay didn't tell me Larry said all that. But we went, we got the engine in and ran to Lebanon, and I went out there, and I come in, and I cranked the sway bar down as tight as I get it, put about 20 rounds in the left rear, and everybody said, you got to run stagger in the rear tires. I'd run them straight across the back, went out there and passed Larry, and he didn't like that. He, he let me know about it, because I wasn't supposed to pass him with a car he couldn't make run. <laughs> but uh, I won several I won a lot of races that year, and, and had a real good year, and then we, we went back, Jay went back, and we went back to running a late model, and I ran in for a couple of years. In 1987, I finally retired from racing. But I didn't completely get out of racing. Uh, I, uh, Randy, my little brother Randy, he'd ask me to flag for him and son, and I'd flag Monad. I'd flag uh, Levin for him when he didn't have nobody or couldn't get nobody. Uh, I flagged uh, a race or two at West Plains. Joplin, Fayetteville, the old, old Joplin track. You'd have, to be, you'd have to be pretty old to remember the old, old Joplin track, not that new one. And then I'd go, my boy started racing Brett, and I'd go help him a little bit when I wasn't working. And then I went to the racing squad, did watch my son-in-law, Burrow Woods race. And uh, that's about, uh, uh, about my end of the race, and I, I quit going. But uh, I want to thank my little brother Randy. Uh, Randy always give uh, all the drivers a good track to race on. He was always honest with us and he always paid good. And uh, I just I just want to thank him and I, I want to make sure that uh, I thank Larry and uh, Randy for uh, helping me all them years and my entire family and my parents who supported uh, us us uh, boys uh, that was racing, uh, our mom and dad always supported us. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank all the fans that used to come to the races and still go to the races. I had a blast, and uh, it was a great ride. Thank you.